A lot of devices have components on both PCB sides, either to save space because they have a strict size limit or some other design choice requires it. But if you can limit component placement to one side only, your reward will be a lot of free space for documentation and self-promo, but you also achieve easier manufacturing. Both wave soldering through hole or reflowing surface mount components benefit from this, but in our case, focus on reflowing. Applying paste, placing components, then putting the prepared PCB in a reflow oven or on a soldering hot plate is a straightforward process. However, an oven or hot plate can be expensive, also either too big or way too small. Luckily, we can find much cheaper alternatives, and they are as good as the expensive big ones, right? Apart from the lack of fine temperature control, potentially damaging your desk, burning your hand and killing you when it fails, it's practically the same for less money. Of course, if you don't want to assemble your PCB, PCBWay can do it for you. If you are like me and love soldering at home, you can also order just some prototype PCBs, stencil masks and many others. I will leave a coupon code in the description. I am truly satisfied with them. But back to soldering those PCBs. Sometimes we need a cheap hot plate because hot air reflow can blow our parts away, but a potential shock hazard is never acceptable. Let's improve this device and see if we can make it safe while keeping the cost down. So, what problems do we have? First, the heat radiates everywhere, damaging anything below. Second, we don't have a switch to turn it on or off. Third, a lamp would be nice to indicate if it's on. Fourth, we don't know if it's hot or not. Fifth, last but not least, it doesn't have protective earth. Of course, preventing a shock is the highest priority, but this is just an unordered list. Let's improve our setup step by step. Our first step is adding some insulation. These hot plates are pretty simple constructions. We have a PTC heating element, a metal plate and some standoffs. PTC means positive temperature coefficient. When it's cold, its resistance is low, conducts a lot of amps, therefore it gets hot really fast. The heater's resistance will increase if it gets hotter, limiting the current, so it will automatically reach a terminal temperature. We don't need temperature control because the heating element does everything by itself, just choose the right one. Mine says 260 degrees Celsius, but the thermometer showed a little bit lower. It does its job and that counts. The heating element is locked in place to our plate. It's aluminium in my case, conducts heat really well. But heat gets radiated to the bottom too and we can't really prevent it. If you just put it on a desk, it will fry everything under itself. They added some standoffs, but that's not enough. Longer standoffs could be a solution, but we really need some insulation. I used a piece of fire brick for insulation during soldering. It works really well. I drilled four holes and added some proper standoffs, so heat insulation is done. My hot plate came with a fixed power cord. It desperately needs a switch. Adding a cheap lamp switch is risky, because LED lamps usually don't need several amps. I chose a switch rated to 6 amps, so it should be fine. Also, at this point, we have a much more important issue. Prevent death by adding protective earth. In theory, the PTC heating element is perfect. In practice, we are operating it with line voltage and it literally touches the aluminium plate. If something goes wrong, line voltage will be available on the plate and that's not really acceptable. If we add protective earth connection to the plate, it will trip a regular or residual current circuit breaker if the PTC fails. Never ever expose anyone to line voltage, even by accident. These disasters are preventable and we have the technology. Use it. We can put PE and the switch wiring in a cute little box and with the right fire brick, all of them will nicely fit on the brick. Finally made a safe and somewhat elegant hot plate. But we have some improvements left. We should add the small lamp to show when it's turned on. Modern lamps are just glorified LEDs with a huge resistor. They are also way too long, so we can't easily install it. So can we replace it with the DIY version? We get back to the original problem. What happens when it fails? That's why the store-bought LED lamps are so long. For safety. So instead of tinkering, I got a neon lamp or glim lamp because they look cool and can be directly used with line voltage. Last but not least, temperatures. Aluminium is notorious for having the same color even at high temperatures. Ok, iron starts to glow over 600 degrees Celsius and we never go near that temperature anyway. But if we add the digital thermometer, it could significantly increase the size of the project. 
we don't have precise temperature control, so a thermometer would only be good for indicating danger. I tried to look for an inexpensive and analog solution and almost found the perfect one – thermometer stickers. You can get a lot of different ones and some of them can indicate soldering temperatures too. The problem is that they can't reset. If you reach the threshold, the sticker gets discolored permanently. So if you want to add the thermometer, go with the super cheap thermocouples. We have significantly improved this hot plate with only a few tricks. Of course it lacks proper thermal control, so don't even dream about having a good reflow profile with this. It's not a replacement for a good hot plate or oven, but if you just want to try this technique for cheap, at least don't die in the process. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video.